According to recent polls, 62% of adults say they celebrate Valentine's Day, spending between $75 and $100 each on average. That translates into $448 million spent on candy the week before February 14th. That's 58 million pounds of chocolate and 36 million heart-shaped boxes. To give this a sense of scale, at Halloween, Americans are projected to spend $9 billion on costumes, candy, and decorations. 7 in 10 Americans will celebrate Halloween this year, according to the National Retail Federation, with celebrants spending, on average, $90 each. Breaking down a holiday into numbers and statistics may take the fun out of it, unless you sell candy, in which case it probably adds to your holiday enjoyment. But there's another group of people who love these numbers. That's marketers. Now, part of being a good marketer is asking questions, theorizing, looking for data to support or disprove your theory, or creating your own data by setting up a test. I'm sure I'm not the only marketer to ever have been surprised by the difference between what I thought people wanted versus what the numbers showed me they actually wanted. Consumer insights, market research, product R&D, this is how a holiday that started off with the simple exchange of handmade cards turned into a $448 million retail event. And these same tactics aren't limited to retail. Finding out what your clients want and how they want it is a key element of a successful law firm marketing strategy. And on top of that, even when you do develop a new way of providing that good law, you have to let people know about it. And that's what we're talking about today on Lawson. Market research, Star Wars quotes, and candy everybody wants. And that's just the kind of Valentine you should expect from us by now. You ready? Let's go. Lawson, the podcast for law firms. Powered by Consult Webs. Welcome back to Lawson, the only podcast of law firms that can grasp the fabric of space-time and turn it into a slipcover for your couch in your TV room. I am Jake Sanders, astro-meta-biophysicist, and with me as always is the quantum mechanic himself in training, Paul Julius. Paul, remember that time you leaped into the body of Steve Jobs? That was weird. I have never been exposed to that many vegetables and ideas at the same time. It's incredibly unusual. You fit at the turtleneck too. It was, it was, yeah, it was like being slowly strangled. <laughs> <laughs> With genius. <laughs> yeah. It's a thread count of genius. I didn't say it was a bad experience. No, you no, know? no. And you, but you. Depends on what you're into. You leaped out and you apparently helped him make the right decision. So that's pretty awesome. I mean, the thing is, because I'm in training, I can't exactly control the leap in and leap out part of it. So no, uh, it's a little abrupt. And when is it not? <laughs> Tell them what's on the show today. On the show today, we talk about alternative legal services, DIY legal in the palm of your hand, and then a chat with Aaron Levine, PellaDivorce.com, on what it takes to successfully market a family law firm in Splitsville. And as always, we put our guests under the hot lights with five questions we ask everyone. Pull up a plate. It's the Hot Takes Buffet. The articles today on display at the Hot Take Buffet. From businessinsider.com, uh, it's There's No Need to Hire a Lawyer When These Sites Let You Do It Yourself by Don Kawamoto. Um, and then, Paul, you found another one on Forbes, which is called The Legal, The Future of Legal Services, Putting a Law Firm in the Palm of Your Hand by Jeff Bell. Yeah, it's like what happened with me and Steve. <laughs> oh, my God. All of a sudden, I have a law firm in my pants. Look at this. It's crazy. Nobody asks for that. Yeah. Um, I could put a thousand <laughs> law firms in your pants. <laughs> I am good. I am fine. Thank you. Um, so, so you found these two articles. Tell us why, and then uh, give us a brief rundown of them, and then let's discuss the the takeaways. All right. So the first one, uh, the you don't need to hire a lawyer when these sites let you do it yourself. Um, Amazing. I do want to say, Don. Kawamoto does write for the Motley Fool. I don't. I never really checked to see if she invested in this company or not. It um, says not. It says oh, at the bottom. No? It says okay. that she is not a stakeholder or anything, which I thought yeah. was an interesting. Okay, good to know. Good disclosure okay. there on Business Insider. 
So this runs down uh, a bunch of different things. Basically says last year, Google Ventures poured $18.5 million into Rocket Lawyer um, and talks about the different costs of um, basically legal consumer items of yeah, these different sites, itself. US legal forms, legal zoom, rocket lawyer, all this stuff, mm-hmm. uh, goes through, you know, basically, uh, is it a subscription service? Uh, can I, you know, you can get a will made for a flat fee, stuff like that. Right. And, and then at the end, there's a, there's a section on reviews, which is what really attracted me to this one. Um, and it really comes down to basically the summary of this stuff says there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, but unless you're doing something that's extremely basic, fast and cheap doesn't always work. Mm. And lawdepot.com doesn't work. That sounds like it would work. I'm picturing like dudes with forklifts just, or somebody walking around with an orange off. apron who yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't help me. You sent me to the window aisle. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, when consumer reviews, uh, consumer reports asked people, what was the interface like? Unless it was super simple, you actually need some boots on the ground. You actually still need a concierge, legal concierge mm. um, approach, which is interesting because Aaron Levine offers such packages at Hello Divorce, informed from her boutique law firm experience in the Bay Area. So the second one... Jeff yeah. Bell, you pointed this out. What what's what's wrong with this article on so Jeff, Forbes? <laughs> yeah, so so Jeff is the CEO of Legal Shield, right? Which is a subscription law service. Who knew? So there he is on Forbes. He's talking about you can get everything through he's a, a smartphone. Um, right. But he does make some good points, and True. and I think one thing, um, you know, he does, there, there's a bunch of different things in here. Rising, he talks about rising consumer expectations, mm-hmm. um, flight to quality. I thought that was an interesting uh, way of describing it. But basically, they want people who can perform the service well. But he doesn't, they don't necessarily want to have a relationship um, with someone so they can, you know, pay them some kind of retainer. Uh, and the one thing that really jumped out at me at this one. Uh, it says a personal touch must accompany quote G whiz technologies. Mm. So uh, again, y- y- we're, we're looking at this theme between the two things of like, is, you know, can, can we automate some of this stuff? Sure. Can we make it into an app? Sure. But the average legal consumer is going to hit a point where, and and this is the whole point. They were probably looking for a lawyer in the first place. They're not going to know if what they're doing is right or wrong. If I don't have confidence in the documents I I created, didn't really help out much. It didn't save me any money. There's something amazing about this second paragraph here um, that's resonant around the theme, I think, of of, of this episode and of this time Mm -hmm. um, with Valentine's Day. There's absolutely is a place for chat bots and voice assistants, um, and the marketplace demands it. But the successful company must walk a fine line. Products must also have emotional resonance and a personal connection. This means that simple answers can be from a virtual assistant, but when it comes to adopting a child, you want an accountable and responsive lawyer to serve you. So it's interesting when they say adopt a child because they are talking about law firms, but what we discover with Aaron later is that a family law firm operates under different stress stressors, maybe. Mm-hmm. And well, solving different problems. Right. So they're involved in different situations. And but there they are, there still is the legal transaction and there still yes. is the mediation. But what Aaron does is apply this same thought that that uh Jeff is talking about here in this Forbes article to her own offshoot from a boutique law firm where she was having problems where she couldn't deliver the legal services that she wanted to, to the people that needed it. And it was people who were getting divorces and people who were going through rough times. And so she didn't just create an app where you can swipe left and just trash your bride, you know? And <laughs> and it's like that sweet, right? Like bros just divorcing hoes. And you're just like, well, there, there might be a little bit more to that. Because we find out later that she gets into these places where people are fearful, then they're angry. 
then there's contention. And so no amount of technology could could help uh, soothe that beast. But what could would be somebody who understood how to apply content and technological solutions to get legal services to these people in a context that matters to them. Because that's what the point is, is it's not a personal touch. It's actually a contextual touch that brings your solution into the life of someone. Um, so it's like, it's the theme of the show. I mean, this is great. What a great find. But how cool is that? Um, that, you know, that dude from Legal Shield is is touching on that. And that's what Aaron's doing at Hello Divorce. Oh. And I just, I, and, but, you know, she's not bragging about an app or some takeaway tech. Um, she started with her audience. You know? But she also just like, she spits fire at this article because check this out. The article says, more and more, we seek out companies that digitally deliver excellent customer service, but with a personal touch. Mm. For the legal services industry, this is both immensely challenging and yet exciting. But first, let's state the obvious. Lawyers are not known for customer service. Wow. And Erin, she knows that. And, and she fixed it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and one of the most amazing things is that when she decided to do HelloDivorce.com, she didn't look at her peer groups for inspiration. Right. She didn't look at other law firms, which, you know, you say later, Paul, you, you're like, I think that that's that you're the role model, um, which is weird. Uh, you, that person out in front looks like they're drowning. They're actually winning the race you're not swimming in or something. You know, I mean, it's like being an innovator, you you are by yourself a lot. And it's kind of weird. I'm sure there's a lot of of it, it's it's gotta be it's not cool to be out there without anything to yeah. measure yourself against. You know, you're right. you're running, you're out there and like, wait a minute, what happened to the rest of the people running this race? Well, and you know? that's that's the story that you don't hear about those heroes, is mm -hmm. is everyone wants to be there, but um it ain't cool when you're there because you're yeah. bucking the status quo. You're, you know, if you're Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, Marie Curie, you know, any of these people that really just like blasted a hole in yeah. people's worlds, they were out there alone and, and they risked some of their lives for that stuff, you know? So it seems like it's not related. Love, uh, loss, building relationships, um, Valentine's Day, family law, tech. DIY um, law firms in your pants. We're going to um, tie it all together in the interview with Aaron. It's incredible. And I think we do. I think we do a wonderful oh, yeah. job. So let's, let's go to it. Let's go. After these messages, we'll be right back. Any lawyer looking to grow their business online can generate more leads from their website by hiring ConsultWebs. After working with lawyers exclusively since 1999, we've tested thousands of web designs and marketing strategies, so we know what flips and what flops. For more information, visit www.consultwebs.com today. And now, a lawsome interview. Aaron Levine has been working for 14 years advising clients, litigating, negotiating, and mediating contested and cooperative divorces, and running the respected boutique family law firm Levine Family Law in the Bay Area. In 2018, Aaron snagged the grand prize at the Duke Law and Tech Accelerator Program. She's also the founder and CEO of Hello Divorce, a service that empowers clients to manage their separations online with easy-to-follow, step-by-step guidance, and affordable access to top-notch lawyers. With a full schedule, we're honored to have this opportunity to sit with Aaron to chat about love and law on the Lawson Podcast. Aaron, welcome aboard. Nice to be here. Let's start with Hello Divorce. You're a traditional lawyer. You have a boutique law firm, but then you start this company. Um, can you give us a rundown on how you started conceptualizing it? What the pivot away from a traditional law firm model has been like for you? Sure. Well, I started to conceptualize Hello Divorce when, honestly, I was just getting bored. 
I had to make a decision between growing my firm or starting something new and different. At the same time, I had clients who were asking for services and products that we didn't yet offer, and I really couldn't offer them in a meaningful, cost-effective way so long as I was running the firm as it was. My overhead was just too high. So if I was going to offer these flat fee services or products, I needed to automate and systemize and reduce my overhead such that I could offer this to our consumers, but also make money. I also always regarded myself as a tour guide of sorts. I like helping people navigate the legal system. That's what I enjoy. So it made a lot of sense for me to break down the system in a way that people could understand it, that was in plain English and in bite-sized pieces, since that's just one of my strengths. So... Mm. I spent, I mean, those, the first year or so, I was very, very dedicated to the law firm and had n- not so much time to be able to dedicate to Hello Divorce. It was really like I'd be at the law firm all day, I'd be with my kids in the evening, and then mm-hmm. I'd start working on Hello Divorce in the afternoon. Right. And then I hired a design firm to take me through a design sprint. What I mean by that is to really break down the divorce process and understand what the market is, what they wanted, and if this was really anything that I could provide. And so in that first design sprint, we met with hundreds of people who had either just been divorced, were considering divorce, or were like in the divorce process to get a good sense of what it was they were looking for in a lawyer and a legal service. And we also did a tremendous amount of research and statistics on consumer-facing legal technology, how many divorces are out there and how many people are self-represented and all, and gathered all that data. Mm. And at the end of the sprint, I got really excited and felt like, hey, there is a market here and I want to address it. And this is where I'm going to put my time and focus. So, wait, so you're a lawyer? I just want to make sure you're a lawyer. I'm a lawyer, yes. For 14 years now. Because this sounds like a marketer is, I'm, t- I'm talking to a marketer right now. Deep market research, trying to understand the needs, seeing if you can create a product that can fulfill a, a demand. I mean, this is pretty heady stuff. So you just kind of wandered into this or or just at that nexus of you getting bored, having things that you wanted to do, being a tour guide. I love that idea. Um, So in that quest to be the tour guide and lay things out in an easy to understand way, you have um, membership options. You have legal coaching as an option at Hello Divorce. There's a pay as you go kind of plan. Um, So the drive to adopt those options, Unpack that a little bit more uh, uh, in regards to Hello Divorce and how you have then transitioned that market research into what you're offering there. Uh, Initially, Hello Divorce was part of my law firm. So Mm -hmm. I didn't have to really worry about the ethics rules um, in regards to like unauthorized practice of law and what Mm -hmm. is legal advice versus what isn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started that way as of January 1st, 2019, I, I now have two separate companies, but at the time I really wanted to focus on getting a great product out there and great options out there that didn't necessarily, um, you know, fall into one category or the other. I just wanted to see if there was a consumer demand. And so Initially, my biggest mistake was I offered way too many options. Users told me that they were excited about the options, but super confused. They had no idea what to choose. They had enough pain points and new issues in their own personal lives to deal with. They kind of wanted me to direct them as to like what it is that they needed, as opposed to just here are the options, pick what you need, because people just didn't know what they needed. 
What they do know is whether or not they're willing to do something more do it yourself, whether or not they'd prefer to have somebody just pick it up and do it for them, and whether or not they need legal advice or strategy. So they know that pretty quickly on. And so we redesigned about six months after launch and shifted our focus to these membership options, uh, wherein we also offer a la carte services, but it's not like our main focus. Um, Generally, what happens is if somebody purchases like a legal document assisted divorce, at some point they might need some legal help. And at that point, the legal document assistant will be like, here's the link to purchase two to three hours of one of our lawyer's time. And you can use it however you want. You can email, you can Zoom video chat, you can have her review your documents and revise them. But it sounds like at this point in your divorce, it might make sense for you to have a couple hours of a la carte services. You know, looking at the at the uh, Hello Divorce site, it's it's very distinct. Um, I, I, I like it. It's very straightforward. And one thing I've noticed, your blog post, um, your blogs, you have some amazing posts on there, guest posts, uh, stuff you wrote. Your headlines are on point. You're, 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 you have a marketing sense mm. and sensibility that we rarely see. Mm. Um, and so I'm just... You know, you ha- I'd like to know a little bit more about your approach with these things, um, and particularly like the the commercials about flat fee divorces. Um, oh God, some of the so some genius. of the yeah. yeah oh man yeah I mean Those it's, are hilarious. it's it, you, you're but you're spot on. I mean that's what I'm saying. They're not you're not making like cringy lawyer commercials, mm-hmm. um, and and that's amazing. So I mean, what's do you have? you know, a, 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 an approach to this? Is this something that you learned about when you were talking to all these different people yeah. at the different stages of divorce or yeah. like, where does that come from? Or are you just a natural? Right. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's amazing. True. Thank you. Too kind. <laughs> Too kind. This Aww. is the fun part for me. This is the part <laughs> I enjoy. Although I will say that it it's overwhelming and mm. you know, a lot of this was out of necessity. I didn't have the capital um, to be able to hire a team to help me. I heard, you know, in your podcast recently, I think it was with Rachel, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the fears and concerns about like outsourcing your social media and especially to somebody who is young and might understand social media, but doesn't understand the field or your brand at all. And that really resonated with me. My approach to marketing is you have to do what it is you like and capitalize on what your strengths are. Because as you know, it's a marathon. You don't get, for the most part, instant belief and trust in your brand or people running to your site. Instead, it's over the long haul and really building for me an authentic brand and that people can connect with and that offers real help and services in a meaningful way. And so my strengths lie in storytelling, in humanizing the law of personal relationships and connection, Mm. and in creating tools that people can use to access the law that aren't scary, <laughs> mm. for lack of a better word. I, I don't motivate by fear. I motivate through empowerment. And so that's what I enjoy. And so it's not, I mean, you know, it's a chore to a certain extent, but it is also something that I really like to do. And so it does come naturally. And I had no idea if it would work or not, really. I had no idea. I wasn't turning to lawyers to look at how they were marketing or advertising because their market was going to be very different than who I was going to try to attract. So instead, at the time, I was looking at like Amy Porterfield and some other, um, you know, marketing geniuses that market that help people market directly to the consumer. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really helpful, inspired me a lot. It gave me some 
helpful tools. And I sort of just like jumped on it from there. Well, you're just a badass. Yeah, you shouldn't, other lawyers should be looking at you. Kind of curious, aside from this type of stuff, do you ever look at um, some of the, some of the more traditional um, routes that lawyers go to like paid advertising, um, you know, maybe stuff like that. I mean, is that ever, do you just shy away from that? Are you dabble in it? Are you hardcore invested? Do you have any kind of feelings about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely have feelings about it. I think it can absolutely be done right, but it's terrifying to me to put my, it's not a strength of mine. So it's very scary for me to put like money into it without really knowing what the return will be. And most people that I've worked with, it requires like at least a six month commitment. And that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. to put into, you know, a marketing campaign that, you know, you don't know what the results are going to be. So um, Mm. I am just at that point right now where I think I'm ready to embark in it again. I had some success with my law firm way back in the day. At this point, we don't use Google ads or Facebook ads for Mm -hmm. Levine Family Law Group, but I do advertise on Yelp and that's been quite successful. Mm. Um, But I think I'm, I'm like about there with Hello Divorce, um, wanting to venture into that area, but, you know, being really cautious about it too. Wow. And it's interesting because you just walked into the content marketing world, just brave, right into that forest, um, not knowing if it would work. Um, but paid has that weird thing because if it doesn't work, you're going to find out real quick and your money's going to just disappear out of your pants. So, um, right. yeah, it's it's interesting, the two different time scales because I think that's at the heart of marketing and advertising is that you want to grow that brand and be authentic. But then you also need to get out there and kind of gain that exposure and get the notoriety. So it it seems like you have a good blend on both of those fronts. Um, so I definitely want to jumpstart. Like I, you know, I mm-hmm. I really have been thinking about the best way to do that. We have this commercial now that you mentioned earlier. That's and, so great. Um, but not very many people have seen it. I and know. So I and definitely it's genius. Want, you know. Thank you. I want to figure out the best way to get it out there. Um. You know, like it's, it's definitely, it's interesting that you bring this up because it's definitely on my mind and I'm exploring it with caution. Um, but I think that's really probably the next place I'm going to go. Totally. Um, I also look at data, tons and tons of data. And mm, interesting. so like, as an example, uh, when people sign up for a free membership with Hello Divorce, they now have access to resources and tools and checklists and flowcharts and a support calculator and things of that nature. I love that. And I'm looking at, and they get my marketing emails. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at how many people open my emails. What emails do they tend to unsubscribe more to? And that informs what I write about. So as an example, when I have a checklist or a worksheet that I am promoting either through the blog or through one of my emails, people love it. Uh, It tends to really get a lot of engagement. Uh, Earlier this week, one of my emails was was a more sales type email where I was encouraging people to check out our new online form generating software, which I think is Mm -hmm. awesome. And I know that people who are using it is awesome. Mm -hmm. But The fact that I was trying to sell Mm -hmm. to people that were either hurting or maybe not at their best, Mm. um, Mm. like actually angered a lot of people. Mm. They, they, they're like, Hey, I'll build a relationship with you. And when I'm ready, I'll use your service, but like, don't push it at me. You know, I think that's where the context is missing with advertising because it's not there. You're not there to stand next to it. It's just fascinating that those those problems exist and you're paying attention to your clients and those pain points but they exist for you um as you're seeking to market and advertise i had a i have a quick question because it seems like the improvements and that that analysis that you're providing towards your data that you're even looking i wrote something down that says full scope listening Because I think you just said, I pay attention to what people unsubscribe on. 
Whereas someone who's just looking for rewards is looking for what they love the most, most trafficked, most hits, most engaged. You're actually paying attention to the things that detract. And I think there's something about that. And you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but at the beginning, I was talking about love. And, and, and I think that you are showing me that you love Hello Divorce as a business and as a marketing enti- entity. And it seems like no one would put <laughs> the fun things in the tour guide, you know, metaphors and all of those deep dives into data and market research. If they didn't have something that was meaningful, that they wanted to build a relationship, but you in your professional life um, are seeing people who are going up and down, facing irreconcilable differences, huge identity changes. Um, and, and I think a law firm owners are, are seeing that relationship with their law firms. I'm this lawyer and I want this and I have this thing that's holding me back. So I just wanted to see if there was a way that you could speak on themes that you've noticed in your legal work with love and loss that inform the way you think about your relationship to your law firm and your uh, work with Hello Divorce, like building something that lasts with something that you love. When I hear your attention to marketing, I can tell that you really do love this concept. And it's not just for you to be like, don't you love my new color scheme? Or don't you love the font? Um, You're past that. You're past being enamored with it. You're past the lust. You know, you're into building something. And I thought just as you deal with people who are going through love and loss and how you said it at the beginning, you said, I I talk to people who are like in the middle of falling out. Um, You're not falling out. You're leaning in and and screw Sheryl Sandberg, but you are engaged. And that's my thing. I just want to, I just want to, I want people to kind of hear that because Paul was saying we don't see it. And I think a lot of people don't want to do it because I don't want to fall in love with some business model or whatever. It just seems like you went in not knowing if it was successful. And that sounds like love. It's a commitment. I mean, you're talking about commitment. Yeah, Yeah. it is. It's so uh, that, I mean, that's a really good point. And I've written about it some too. I not only love being a lawyer, but I absolutely love being a businesswoman. And I love using technology to help people solve a problem. And so the biggest thing and the biggest problem that I noticed in the family law world is how quickly people who are falling out of love or maybe hurt by you know, like you don't always choose to get divorced, but usually it's after a long sort of painful journey to try to stay in relationship. And so once one or both parties decides, all right, this is it, the marriage is over, both people very quickly get anxious. And anxious about the unknown, anxious about the legal process, anxious about what will life look like when I'm no longer like looked at as a couple, but now as an individual. Mm -hmm. And that anxiety quickly turns to fear and fear generally turns into anger. Mm -hmm. So with that anger, it likely immediately lends itself to a divorce that can blow up very, very quickly. And my goal here and Um, To be frank, I I didn't really understand the power that Hello Divorce had until we launched and started gaining some traction. But one thing that we've been able to do is help quell that anxiety. And we've done it in a way by being transparent with the other party so so everybody knows what's going on, by offering tips for strategy, by demystifying the process by encouraging parties to get a mediator first if they can't come to an agreement, Um, by encouraging parties to get legal advice, by telling them, hey, when both people understand and know what is at stake and what the actual law is, they're they're less likely to fight about the little things and the things that don't matter so much. Um, So for... 
by doing that, we've really been able to take the cost, the average cost of divorce, and cut it by thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And not just because of the products we have or the services we offer, but I think really because we've been able to um, honor the personal relationship and honor the pain that comes with it and the love that's now lost Mm. and help people to reorganize their family in a way that works for them Mm. and manage that anxiety that is just so toxic or turns to such toxicity. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. And, and I just think that you approaching this from a deep admiration and understanding and wanting to be as empathic as you possibly could to your target audience. I hate the word target. These are people, yeah. you yeah. know, and, and it's weird to, to use marketing and military terminology, strategies, targets. And, and really what it is, is that you've, you've sought an opportunity to deeply understand someone and find a way that you can be in that relationship, even if it's the relationship of getting rid of relationships. And I just think there's such an uh, amazing, powerful, um, but core concept to that anxiety. I, I really think that that is central to a lot of marketing and advertising and good business strategy and just good relationships. So the fact that you've addressed that is, is brilliant and that you stick around and that you're hungry for, for, for more, um, and learning how to make it better and enhance. Um, That's what people want. They want an advocate, not just somebody who can write a good contract or tell you the fancy words or grill that mother effer for all he's worth, Mm -hmm. um, which is an aspect of it. But you have brought something to the table which goes beyond your service. And I think that is the heart of of good marketing. And it's it's, it's something that's going to make something last. I mean, so this is the stuff that me and Paul talk about all the time at the Arby's drive through And they're like, sir, this is an Arby's. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think I have an idea for a, for a blog post for you too, because I don't know if you, if you intentionally did that. Yeah. Here's some unsolicited advice. Let me just fly. Um, no, but anyway, talking you- about it. I, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I need so, ideas. <laughs> well, what you just said, what you just, I'm a huge star Wars fan. And, and what you just said, you, you encapsulated what Yoda said about turning to the dark side. Yes. Anger turns to hate, I, I hate leads to suffering, thing. which is same a path thing. to the dark side. Same thing. Um, but it, I mean, it's solid advice. Granted, you know, it's fictitious, but for in, in the movie, but I mean, that's, <laughs> it's a, here's something where you're saying, look, you can compare it to what, what this pop culture reference is. And that's for real. Like you get scared real. about something that doesn't happen. It's an apt comparison. So, I mean, that'll be fun, right? Just oh. write like you just make this stuff up, and it just happens like that. I'm, I'm, yeah, we, yeah, Jake, we should, we should go work with Aaron. That's amazing. I know that's what I'm saying. I want to hang out with just her. Like, it just comes out. But it's, <laughs> it's like, and it's not, it's not made up though. It's central no. to answering a question, and that's where I think great marketing and all that activity that has meaning to it comes from a central question where you were at the beginning of this interview at your old law firm board yeah. trying to answer questions and see if you could get people what you could. Um, and I, I, that, that's, that's, it's just so great. So, so now we Aaron, just need you guys to help me get it to a larger audience and we can totally <laughs> do that. Well, and that's part of our mission here. Cause that, that advertising, um, that TV, that, that little spot that you made, was great. And I could tell that somebody was like, I'm going to make this as easy to understand as I possibly can, because that's the only way. Um, so I'm so thankful for your activity and I'm so thankful that you joined us on this, but we need to know how we can learn more about you. You mean besides handing me a check to invest in my company for a hundred thousand? Besides seed investors, uh, how can besides, they, yeah. Yeah, where do they no, mail the checks? Um, <laughs> So, um, I am, I'm always open to meeting and connecting with new people. You can find me at Twitter or Instagram at hello divorce and I'm on LinkedIn and my email address is Aaron at hello divorce.com. Five questions we ask everyone. Five questions we ask everyone. Number one, what was the last book you read? 
Does it count if I listen to Audible because I'm a terrible reader? No, that's perfect. What was the of last course. book? We'll accept that. Spun? We'll accept that. Sure. Okay. So the last book I read was Kim Scott's Radical Candor mm-hmm. and Sarah Lacey's The Uterus is a Feature, Not a Bug. Nice. All right. Number two, what is your favorite place? I love my yoga studio. I love Northern California beaches. I'm from Southern California. Don't get me wrong. I love Southern California, but I really prefer Northern California beaches and I love the redwoods. Nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, Number three, what sites, blogs, newsletters, or podcasts do you regularly check in with? I am primarily a podcast girl. Like I listen to a ton of different podcasts I don't generally hop on sites. I'll mm. hop on Twitter mm-hmm. or I will like I get newsletters from the sites that I like best. So there's about 20 or so a week that I, you know, have channeled into a folder on my Office 365 and then I like go through them. But let's see the podcast that I'm listening to most right now i've always listened to lawyerist love the guests and usually know them and connect with them so i love hearing more about them Mm -hmm. um i've been listening to the happy lawyer fresh air why masters of scale Mm -hmm. um the accidental creative Mm -hmm. is a fun one and um a ton of different like legal and marketing podcasts as well cool very cool. Nice. Uh, number four, if you were stranded on a desert island and could pick only one condiment to take with you, what would it be? Is sour cream a condiment? It, a- absolutely. A sour cream goes on everything as far as <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like That's literally awesome. everything. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Uh, okay, we made it to the end. Number five, after a long day or a long week at work, how do you relax and unwind? Well, the first thing I like to do is set my clocks forward in my house so that I trick my kids into thinking it's later than it is and I get to put them to bed early. (laughs) Bar time. (laughs) Yep, yep. Um, I use a lot of sarcasm that makes me laugh and hang out with friends or go to a bar that, like, where I get to just be myself. Um, There's two magazines that have like nothing to do with my career, but everything to do with my career that I love to read. And what I mean by that is like they're, they inspire my creativity and, um, but they're not directly related to like law or marketing Mm. or like, you know, the most effective pitch. So I love to read those magazines and I love yoga. Um, What are those magazines? Yeah, come on. Oh, they're so girly, though. Um, Flow magazine, which is um, like basically about slowing down and enjoying um, the moment and meditation and um, creativity and art and Darling magazine, which um, it has some great articles in there. Um, And then also like it's just, yeah, it's pretty girly, but I love it. For show notes, links, and info, go to thelawsomepodcast.com or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Be sure to leave us a review and rating in iTunes or wherever you find the you listen to. Until next week, stay lawsome.